I guess that everybody has heard of Pythagoras' theorem, but what is it exactly, and why is it true? I should like to show you, I should like to show you in particular, a proof of Pythagoras' theorem, and a proof which I think is really rather beautiful, an example of mathematics at its best. But first, the theorem itself, which involves a right-angled triangle. And I've drawn one here, I've labelled one of the sides A, another of the sides B, the right angle's here, and the longest side I've labelled C. And the result, as you may well know, is that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. If you take a and multiply it by itself, and then take b and multiply it by itself, and add the t results together, you get c squared. And to me this is quite extraordinary. Not, not the fact that there is some kind of formula for c in terms of a and b. That, it seems to me quite natural that should be so. It's the fact that this is so simple, this formula, and so general. It's true for any right angle triangle whatsoever. I've drawn a fairly fat one here where A and B are uh, roughly comparable. B could be very small compared with A. This would, could be a very long, thin triangle, and this formula would still work. But why? Well, I should like to prove it now with the aid of this red card here, which is a square, and I've got here four copies, loosely made, roughly made, of my original triangle. And I, that le length is A, that length is B, and I'm going to fit four of these triangles into a square of side A plus B. I've made the side of this square is A plus B, so that these triangles fit in together, like this, And if you do this, if you fit four copies of my original triangle into a square of side A plus B, you get a red area here in the middle that's C squared. Because this is a, this is a square, it's a figure with four equal sides, C, and these angles here are right angles because this triangle, for example, is this one turned through 90 degrees because of the way I've constructed it. So this area in the middle, this red area, has area c squared. And I'm now going to prove that this red area it can also be written as a squared plus b squared. And I'm going to do that simply by shuffling these triangles around. I'm going to leave one of them where it is and shuffle the other three around. And I'm going to move this one first up to here. I'm then going to move this one down to here, and then move this one across to here. And because of the way I've constructed this square with side A plus B, these do fit, and they clearly leave two square areas here. This one has side A, so has area A squared, this one has side B, so has area B squared, and the red area must obviously be the same as it was before, and so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that may just involve just a little few pieces of paper cut around, but the, 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 the real thing that's going on here, it seems to me, is going on in our, in our heads. In, 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 if, if, if you've been thinking the same way I have, we have effectively proved Pythagoras' theorem in its full generality. And what did it take? A couple of minutes to prove one of the greatest theorems in the whole of mathematics.